have some fun. If you have questions, just shoot some questions at me. I'm going to talk about a little bit of the way we use Blast at our academy to train players. And I'm going to bring in some things we coach, such as what I call the five deadly conventions of putting. And what I mean by the five deadly conventions of putting are, these are the things that you commonly see and are talking, are talking about with other players that they go to to try to putt better. But in reality, they're deadly. And I'll show you the data that Blast will give you to show you that these things get, get kind of off when you putt. Now, if you have one of the deadly conventions, you can be kind of streaky. If you have all five, you're going to be a lousy putter. So do we have any great putters in our group here that are standing here by a show of hands? Says he's a great putter. Out of way. Good. Any, any, any bad putters in the group? Not, not going to admit it. I wouldn't admit it either. I can tell by the body language. Of who, who's the bad putter? Oh, look at his buddies rolling him under the bus. Yeah, just bad putter there. So, um, I'm just going to hit a couple putts conventionally here, the way the way I would um, with my setup. You know, working on good tempo, good feel, good rhythm in the stroke. Looking for you know rotation value there that's pretty tight. Point 0.5, you know, anything that I see 0.5 or under rotation change is really good. I love seeing that out of a player. So let's talk about one of the deadly conventions of putting that you always hear, and that is grip the putter weak. So players to try to eliminate wrist and hand action will go weak with the lead hand. Now, in, in research of how the body moves, this is your most flexible joint in your body. So to think you can do something to subdue this wrist and not make it move, such as turning it weak, it doesn't matter. You can turn it as weak as you want, and I can still move this wrist a ton. So taking the wrist and turning it weak doesn't calm down wrist action or hand action. You have to train that. But here's what that does, which gets interesting. So when I turn that hand under, so what's interesting is, is Brad Faxon's our main guy here at Blast. And Fax and I have talked putting a little bit, and we both grip the putter very strong, exactly the same. We look exactly the same. You take a picture of his grip and mine, we look exactly the same. But conventional wisdom says, or one of the deadly conventions says, go there with your grip. So what's interesting is, is the way the hand is built, everybody puts their hand up like this and looks at it, your thumb is off center from your fingers. It's not lined up with your fingers. It's off center. So this heel pad blocks the view of your palm. So when you put your hand down and you say, well, this is perpendicular to the ground, you line your heel pads up straight up and down to the ground. When you look down, my palm is pointed this way to my target line. So therefore, my hand wants to go that way and that way. Whereas if I put it down like that, where this heel pad's out, I look like me and Fax now. We have that grip right there. Well, that's actually matches the target line. If I run an alignment stick through my palm, it'll match my target line. But when I go weak, like you've been told or you may read, what happens is I put my hand on there weak and the putter wants to naturally go out and cut across. But you all are pretty smart. You know you don't want to see the putter going that way when you hit a putt, so you bring it, try to bring it straight back. Well, when the hand is turned this way, you bring the putter straight back, the hand rolls down like that. Now the question is, what does that do to the putter face when my hand does that? Well, the putter face, when it rolls down, it shuts. Then when you go through and you go through normal and release it, where do you think the, the putt's gonna go? I'm gonna get it weak in my hand. I'm gonna aim right at the flag. I'm gonna roll it back straight. That face is gonna roll down. And when I release it, oh wow, that putter went way left. The ball missed badly left. So what happens is when you guys are out there practicing with this weak grip, you bring it back straight, the face is rolling down, it goes through and it releases, and it misses wildly left. So, what do you then do to fix that? You see the ball going left, now you start aiming farther right. It's like, I'm missing left, I must be aiming bad here, so now you're aiming over here. Weak grip, the putter rolls down shut, ball starts somewhat aligned now, and it goes in, you go, hey, I fixed it, it was just aim. No, 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 it, it's your grip mechanics. You've got this hand rolled under here. The putter's coming back and doing this. And then our body wants to make the putter release. That's why a, a straight back, straight through, through stroke is very hard. 
because a putter wants to work like a windshield wiper because of our, the way our body's built. So deadly convention number one is a weak grip because it rolls the face down the, the putt misses left badly. So you can see, look at my rotation change number there, 5.3. So when I roll that face down and then it releases, I'm gonna get a giant rotation change to that, to that face. So we don't want that. Remember, I hit that one putt my way, it was, it was 0.5. Now I've got 5.3, and it's just all in the way I grip it in my hands. So once again, just hold your hand up and look at it, and you see your thumbs sit here. They don't sit, they don't sit there, they sit there. And then you look down, that would, be, would match an alignment stick on my ground if I ran something through there. So very important, number one, deadly convention is how you grip the club. There's a reason why Brad Pax and Tiger Woods are undeniably some of the greatest putters to ever play the game. You look at old Tiger Woods, Tiger's grip was the same as Faxon's and the same as mine. He slowly started to move it this way because he's listening to the deadly convention of putting. Okay, so number one, deadly convention is grip. Okay, number two deadly convention, let's just, let's, I'll name them all. So, Grip the putter in your palm, grip it weak, center your ball position, shoulders rock up and down, okay? Those are your deadly conventions of putting. The shoulders don't rock up and down because if you look at me the way I'm built, my shoulders are a T on my spine, right? So if I stand straight up and down and move my shoulders with my putting stroke to Carol here, that's moving parallel to the ground, the butt end of the, of the putter, okay? So in order to make the, the this end work up and down, I have to get into that Michelle Wee tabletop. Now it's, Carol's moving up and down now, isn't it? Okay, but we don't putt in either of these positions. We putt in between. Now when Carol watches the button of that putter, it's gonna have up and down and around, isn't it? Up and down and around. But if I rock my shoulders from here, look at my head movement. What is that forward head movement being thrown back by this lead shoulder gonna do to the putter face? So, when I get set up, and I'm gonna rock my shoulders as best as I can up and down. I'm gonna aim right at the hole. I'm gonna rock that lead shoulder up. Where do you think this ball is gonna go? Wow, badly on the right. Look at the rotation change, almost six. That's all in the fact that I'm trying to rock the shoulders vertical on my spine, but that's not how they work on my, on my spine. They wanna work that way. So once again, I'm gonna take that lead shoulder and try to make it go straight down and straight up. Another 5.9 missed to the right. So I can be consistent, as you see, I did two five nines in a row, but where do I have to aim this putter to make it go in the hole? This is kind of a question I'm looking for audience response here. Left, absolutely. I gotta aim it gigantically left. We're talking six degrees left. So in order to make it go in, who's who's standing behind me here? What's your name, sir? Dale. Dale, come stand right behind me. I want you to tell everybody where I'm aimed here. Am I aimed kind of left of the blast logo almost? Way left of the blast logo. So let's see if, if I get close here. If I... Was it far enough left? There's a 6-6 six, six follow through. So I'm aimed, I'm aimed right here from, from Dale looking at it. To, to accommodate the left shoulder or the shoulders working up and down. So very key that you understand the shoulders work around and up and down. So if you're trying to rock them up and down, you're gonna you're gonna miss lots of putts to the right and you have to accommodate. So I've given you I've given you a right miss and a left miss. So now let's talk about how the ball position affects impact conditions in putting. So we've been told, center the ball position. Get it right in the middle of your body. You hear that all the time, right? Everybody heard get the ball in the middle? I don't like the ball in the middle for one funny reason, okay? If I put the ball in the middle of my body, okay? Let's see if I can do it for you. I'm looking at the ball that way. Now if I'm going cross side or not, it felt, felt like it. But when I put the ball down in the middle, my left eye is looking at that part of the ball. And my right eye is looking at that part of the ball. How do I know which way I'm going, guys? 
I cut it up, I'm right-handed, I want to be putting that way. So optics is a big conversation in putting. You know, eye alignment, seeing what you want to do. And I got asked by someone one time, Rob, how do you maneuver around the optics of a player? Left eye strong, right eye strong, okay? I take optics out of the equation. So I know I want to hit the ball with the putter rising and the putter square. Well, the putter can only be rising if the ball position's forward. If the ball position's back, I'm going to be hitting down on it. The putter's also not going to square. So thinking, if you think about putting, okay, you think about it as a windshield wiper. If the putter's working on plane, it looks like it's opening and closing, but it's really not rotating at all. It's just working on the angle plane of the putter. The putter doesn't sit like that, it sits like this. So it's a windshield wiper, it's got to return to there, and then it's got to exit and go that way. Well, if I move the ball back in the windshield wiper, where's that pointed now? It's pointed to the right. If it's too far forward, it's pointed to the left. So basically, what you want is you want it that little golf ball width where the putter's not going to the right or the left. Now, I did a, a clip for Golf Channel. You can go see it if you Google Golf Channel Rob Strano. Um, I'm known as the pop culture coach around Golf Channel because I teach using movie lines and song lyrics and all kinds of catchphrases. I did the Caddyshack drill where I blindfolded myself on set. Now, the first try, I made the putt. But this is a drill I teach, you, teach players to help them find ball position. So what you want to do is put a ball down, but don't set up to it. Put the putter right here, just slide it back, set up, and you're gonna close your eyes. I call it the Danny Noonan drill. Okay, so you close your eyes like Danny Noonan and be the ball. So you pull the putter back, I'm gonna close my eyes, I'm gonna start with a big stroke, and I'm gonna slowly make it smaller. And what I'm trying to feel is the point in the stroke where the putter's not going down, and it's not going up. There's no down and there's no rise. So I'm gonna close my eyes, and I'm just trying to feel where the putter flattens out. So as I'm going, it's starting to feel flat, it's starting to feel flat, it's starting to feel flat right there. And I open my eyes, and I'm right where I was at setup because I'm used to putting the ball up in my logo. Now, if the ball is up in my logo, it's forward of that flat spot right there, so I'm catching it with upswing. So when I drop a ball from my left eye in my setup, it lands right there. So now optics aren't an issue because where am I looking? I'm looking at the back of the ball, I'm looking through the back of the putter. So when I've got a line on my putter, we have any hunters in the crowd? Anybody? Anybody ever fired a, a, fired a gun? Okay. I fired a gun, I'll admit it, okay? If, if I handed Dale a rifle and said, shoot the T in true golf there, and he did this, I'm going, excuse me, give me the weapon. Step away from the gun, pal. When we shoot a, shoot a gun and we sight anything, if we sight something, we look down the barrel of it or down the line of it. So if my eyes are behind it, I'm now looking down the line of the putt. So I've got the correct ball position where the face isn't opening or closing wrong, and I'm looking down the line of the putt, and the putter is rising as it gets, as it gets the ball. So if you ever hit a putt and your buddies say, oh my gosh, that bounced halfway there, first thing that ought to go off in your brain is, well, I had to hit down on it to make it start jumping. So all my players, when we look at look at video and watch for ball skid, we see zero ball skid. They get the ball turning over right away because they've got it rising with the right amount of loft. Now, let's look at our data here as we talk about ball position and how it affects where the ball goes. So like I said, if I get this ball centered, I'm going to hit down on it. And uh, we know from chip wiper now, this thing is going to go to the right. I don't have the face open values on here, but there they are. Let's see here. Um, so backstroke rotation was four on that. Forward stroke rotation was only 0.4. So you can see by the time I hit the ball, I didn't have time to close that gap. So on my screen at home, the things I have right off the bat that I want to see on my players are back swing rotation, forward swing rotation, and the total change. Okay, so I didn't have time to, chip to close that 4.4 gap. Um, I'm sorry, there it is, the, 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 the um, rotation change was four. I didn't have time to close that gap to get the putter back to square. Now, if I flip it around and I go too far forward, so I get it out too far on my toe, 
Now I've got the left miss. So now you can see the rotation changes one nine the other way because I got too much of the forward rotation of the putter coming through. So all that is important, that ball position, understanding how that affects the delivery of the putter. I see people come to me all the time and they got that ball position dead centered and they got the shoulders rocking up and down and the face is delivering in all kinds of crazy ways and the ball's going different directions when they putt. So blast is a super way to, to, to give you that data. And the cool thing is, it goes on the end of your putter, you don't know it's there. I've had players that have walked off with it because I've forgotten we were using it. And I've gone, and, they, and they've hit putts. I've gone to my next lesson, they're still putting. And they don't remember it's there because you don't know it's there. It fits right on there. It's super simple, super easy. And you don't know it's there, it's so light. So, questions, shoot. Yes, they have, so the question was, Will this fit on a super stroke grip or an oversized grip? Absolutely. This is the adapter that goes on more of the pistol grip. They have a bigger one that goes on the super stroke grip. Absolutely. So it's customizable everything. Dale. I like the way that you do traditional. What about a player that wants to straight back and straight to the style of the Okay, so his question is about the straight back, straight through stroke. Okay, so like I said, when I get this way, Carol, were, Carol was my eyes over here, okay? And Carol said, yeah, the butt end of that club is going up and down and back and forth, okay? Straight back, straight through violates what my body wants to do. Now I have to crank on the putter and twist the face. So if I'm using this as my straight line going back, as I go back, I've got to twist that putter hard to make it go that way. And when I come through, I've got to get to the ball and start to untwist exactly there and twist hard going that way to keep it straight. Now, face, tour players doing that? there are a lot of tour players doing that. My question is this, are they great putters? They're good putters, they're streaky putters, but they aren't the elite putters that, that we will use as a model and go, this is what we do well. I'm out on tour a lot, I'm a past player, I played for 15 years. It frustrates me to go out on tour and watch guys putt because the things that happen in my academy to my players don't happen on tour. So I'll give you a quick example that I'll get to your question, Andy. This is interactive now. From 10 feet, what is my academy record for putts made in a row at 10 feet? Now, keep this in mind, on tour, they average 56% putts made at seven feet. So at seven feet, they're 50-50. What's the academy record Staying in one spot, 10 footers made in a row on grass. Give me a guess, give me a guess. 20, 100, 75. Give me one more guess, somebody. Craig, give me a guess. 10, 108. Girl, girl high school player, 108. And from putts 92 to 100, she made them with me yelling at her, throwing things at her, dropping clubs doing everything I could to distract her. Her putting stroke was that tight. She couldn't mess it up. Now, at five feet, what's the academy record? At five feet, tour players make about 75%. 200, how many? 250, 500. Academy record, 314. And he quit. He, he didn't miss, he quit. He, got, he, just, he said, that, that's enough, because the, the original record was 286. This is one of my tour players. He took it to 314. This kid doesn't miss. Took it to 314. So, and, and he, I said, why'd you quit? I mean, when you're on a streak, you keep going. Stretch that bad boy out there. So these players all work the putter on plane. They don't, they don't take it. On tour, the only player I've ever seen close to what I see in my academy green is Jordan. I watched Jordan one day at the players not miss from about 10 feet. He'd make like 10 in a row, then he'd go do a couple different drills and he'd come back and he'd make 10 in a row. He's the only player I've ever seen in all the years as a player and as a coach out there that's done anything remotely close to what I see my players do. Before I left to come here on Saturday, I had a 12 year old kid who's not a very good putter. He's just learning my putting template that I coach. And we were at seven feet and he made 18 out of 20 at seven feet. And this was only the second or third time we'd ever worked on putting. So he was already blowing the tour numbers out of the water. So when we talk about straight back, straight through, what you've got to realize on tour, those guys are mostly streaky. 
they're always messing around trying to figure out how to get get hot. I said to Brad one day when we were talking, I said, Brad, you know what is interesting about your putter? I said, your putter is always on trending hot. And he was standing there with his arms folded as he was listening to me, and he shifted on his feet. And he paused for a minute, he looked at me and he went, you know what, you're right. My putter is always on trending hot. That's different. My putter was always on trending hot. I never got cold. I grew up in St. Louis at um, a very unique country club. I kind of call it the modern home of American golf with all due respect to all the, all the other courses. I grew up with four other tour players there. 68 Masters champion Bob Golby, Jay Haas, Jerry Haas, who's a year older than me, Frank Connor, and myself. We all were tour players. I copied Jay. Jerry copied Jay. I copied them. And when you look at the template that I talk about here, the template of strong gip, ball position forward, shoulder tilt. That's Tiger. That's Chris Riley. That's Phil Mickelson, early Phil Mickelson out of the California cluster. We're the St. Louis cluster. Fax comes out of the Rhode Island cluster of great putters. Andre, Quigley, Faxon. You had Crenshaw in that cluster in Texas. But we keep going to the deadly conventions because one person tried weakening their grip and they putted better for a little while. And they were a tour player. And they did an article about it. And everybody goes, got to work. It's a deadly convention. Message you up. Andy, question. Cross-handed, cross-handed, left-hand low. Great question. I've identified four attachments off of conventional that actually work. The other ones get streaky again. So when you go left-hand low, cross-handed, that modification is fine. You have to understand one key thing, though. When people go left-hand low, and I, whenever I coach it, I use Furex grip. I think Jim Furex grip is really good, where he takes the index of the right finger and runs it down that way. But what we'll do is we'll grab this way with the lead hand. So we grab under again. So when you grab under, where's that palm orienting now? Up and to the right. So I've got a, an LP, LPGA European Tour player that putts left low. When she first came to me, her hand was there. And she struggled with longer putts. She was fine in tight, but she said, I don't make enough 15, 20, 30 footers. And I saw that, and the first thing I did was I took her from there to there. Now remember what I said about the hand, the way it's built. I took her to where the palm matches the target line now. There to there, she made more 20 and 30 footers last year, yesterday than she's made in the last five years. So very important, Andy, we, we grab it left low, we get there. Absolutely, you see it said, I made it stronger and it helped. So here's a challenge for you guys, fun challenge. Use the word weak positively in a sentence. W-E-A-K, use it positively in a sentence. Anybody? You got one? Do you want a weak roof on the house? No? How about a weak engine in your car? How about a weak bladder? Anybody want a weak bladder? Heck no. So why grip the club weak? The closest we've ever gotten to that question answered positively was, I had a lady one time said, the bartender poured me a weak drink. I said, you pay for a weak drink? She said, no, no good. One of my military guys said we faced a weak enemy. We gave him that one, okay? That's a good one. But we never want a weak grip. I don't want a weak full screen swing grip. I'll weaken it if I want to open the face for a high flop shot or hit a big slice. But I never want a weak attachment to the club. I want that on the strong. I want it right there, okay? so. Left hand low there. The other two good attachments to putting that I've seen and tested, and I've tested them with last and gotten really good metrics on them are, when Langer went from left hand low and got the yips there and changed, he went to this grip right here. Where you, it, it's kind of the Kuchar grip too, where you grab the club up here and hold it to your forearm and just basically swing the left arm. That gives you really, really solid face rotation values. As long as this hand is in the right spot right there, you can get that, that, that club swinging really calmly through. And then of course the other attachment that I find to be really good if the right hand gets a little jumpy is some sort of, of modified claw grip. But that's the, that's the bottom, bottom of the four. That one you can still get a lot of twisting going on. But if you can get it, keep it calm, 
it helps you. It's a good attachment. But really, realistically, I've had players that have come to me left low, claw, weak, whatever. And as soon as I give them, you know, the, the facts and strano grip, we get right there, that strong grip, the, the early tiger grip before you started messing around with it, they, they automatically putt better. It's almost it's almost borderline voodoo to get the hands on their correct way. Any other questions you got for me? Mark. How do you stop decelerating? Great question. Okay, decelerating. The couple ways I see players decelerate come from having the wrong concept of backswing length. So they'll take it back too far, and then there's the, you, you internally rise. That's too big to go that distance. So you bleed off speed. One way to think about that is just think, I'm going to keep a ratio of one-third back, two-thirds through. One-third back, two-thirds through. I'm going to keep it going through. Now the question is, how do you keep it going through without adding a jerky hit to it? So one way I, I tell players to keep it going through is a simple thought. Keep that moving. Simple. Just have the feeling of the back of the left. Keep moving. Don't have to add any speed to it. Just keep it going. Another way to think about it is a lot of times decel happens because something stops. So I can decel. I'm going to let Craig rebound here for me. I'm going to putt at him. If I decel off of a big stroke, this stopped. So when I put the club behind the ball, I have bad intentions. I'm going to hit it. I don't care if it's a driver or putter. When I put the, the putter there, the driver there, I'm going to hit it. So I don't care if it's a ham sandwich, a Beanie Baby, or a Hot Wheels car. I'm going to hit that rascal. The problem is this piece, like I said, has to keep going together. Everything's got to move together. So when I coach putting, my putting technique's called fusion. So I'm trying to fuse these pieces together and keep them moving. So this piece ha here has to move. So <clears throat> one thing you'll see in putting is people get get too much of this with their shoulders. Well, the shoulders are a bunch of floating bones. They're not subdued to anything. That's why we can all be good dancers. We get the shoulders going, okay? We can be good dancers. In putting, we, want, we don't want to be a good dancer. We don't want all that going on. So we've got to round our shoulders to our collarbone. Now this whole piece keeps moving together. So I put it at Craig again, and I focus on not left hand, but let's go big muscles. I'm going to keep this piece going. I'm going to keep that going eliminates decel because I'm just focused on keeping this moving through. So that's one way to stop, or a couple ways to stop a decelerating stroke. Does that help? Great. Dale. What do you think about looking at the, at your, uh, target line when you putt? Looking at the target line when you putt is a question you just asked. Absolutely a viable way to putt. Jordan did it for a while. He still jumps back and forth, doesn't he? It's a great way to practice to free up your stroke, too. So what you want to do is make sure you've got good line and good feel and good touch, but you're just trying to get in there and just look at the hole and just roll it right on through. So it's a really solid way to putt. Look, I got my .5 value again. So if you find you get yourself a little bit mentally bound up when you putt, it's a great way to putt. If you find that when you're putting, you're not putting freely. Um, we were out at um, Tranquilo the other day and Fax was hitting some putts. And it's fun to watch how free his stroke is. If you find you're a little bit tight and tentative, this is a great way to free your stroke up. And what I would tell you to do is put down five or six balls and don't putt to anything to start with. And putt different distances. Putt in a little, little kind of a spoke pattern. So you get five or six balls and just look and go. And just try to go a little farther each time. And just go to each ball and just kind of, kind of knock them out there to free you up to hit putts. Other questions? Anybody else got anything for me? Well, you guys have been great. Blast is an awesome product. Blast Connect is also a great platform to work with where you can upload your, your data, your videos, your stuff to your coaches. So you don't have to, it doesn't have to be there with you. You can practice putting and say, hey, I worked on putting today for a little while. I'm gonna shoot you my data. He logs on, he sees what's going on. He sends you a text, he gives you a call. So when it comes to just, this piece, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that comes along with it too. It's not just a simple putting sensor. It's a chipping full swing. It's a full game sensor process for getting data for yourself and getting data to your coaches. 
thank you guys for being here today at the PGA Show. It's been a blast. I'm Golf Channel coach Rob Strano. Later on today, I'll be doing Facebook Live over at the Golf Channel booth at about 4 o'clock. We're going to go live. Come on down, watch it. We've got some great coaches that will be giving great tips. But thanks for being here today. Thanks for listening.